get a can. So I just um, ran out of space before my last video, but basically the beds, we created them to be Rory proof so that Rory didn't go in there and cock his leg and pedal on the plants and all of that sort of stuff. But um, we also then discovered that the rabbit was getting in. So we've used a mat here and trying a few different methods <laughs> of keeping the rabbit out. And this is actually working really well. So Terry and I ring clipped an old, well, we cut a trampoline safety mat. Uh, we cut it in half and then we've just sort of screwed it onto the base here. So we've got these border um, pine, what do you call them? Pine slats all the way around the base, except for one little part over there so we're a bit short but we use the trampoline mat to rabbit proof the picking bed so it's actually working it's really really working so we haven't had any more diggings happening in this garden so all the holes that are happening around near the sunflowers are because I've pulled them out and shook off the dirt and put the stems down on the ground and I'm going to make what's called a bug hotel for all the you know beneficial insects in the garden and I'm propping up a sunflower over there with a little piece of wire um, but that's yeah blooming rabbits not just a dog proof garden now it's a rabbit proof garden and then this one over here behind us that I went in before is working well because it's the chicken wire so the rabbit can't get in there grass is a bit of an issue we're going to have to just keep on top of that and this fence sorry this gate here to the dahlia bed is actually, I'm not using it at the moment, I've had to put some bits of metal down and cover it over with cardboard because the rabbit was getting in there too. So I'm just not actually using that gate at the moment. I'm just using the, the main gate that I came in and out of before. Um, only other thing that I really have to show you is this big, her bed that is um, made with two big lengths of iron and then we cut the, the actual tank that's in the immediate back garden that we're going to make into a herb garden this is the other half of it that was cut across and then we cut it in half so we've got one half of that piece there and then down the other end we've just been filling it with logs and old pots and everything so that's that makes the other end and then down here we've got all newspaper and then just garden mulch that's happening we've sort of got that all going around on the garden but yeah we've been putting like lawn cut cuttings in here pots that I had some failures with because I was sick and I didn't get to watch them extreme weather all of that sort of stuff should have planted them earlier and then we've just got our scraps from cuttings of like Buddleia, Feverfew, and uh, there's some verbena in here. So, you know, look, I might end up having some seeds come through, but that's okay, because I'll end up selling them. And we still have to top this up with some really good soil. And then I'm gonna start planting, it smells good, doesn't it, Rory? Then I'm gonna start planting herbs in here. So the herbs will be Rory proof again, because he won't be able to jump up into it. And they'll be good for eating, but I really wanna make herb posies for my um, stall and also to sell herbs so this is pea straw which has just been a massive help to the garden and that is this section of the garden pretty well giving you a good rundown with that now and now we're moving over to the other side which is, it looks like a bomb site so get ready okay if mum's watching she's not gonna like this <laughs> this is going to be a another bed that we're creating in here but at the moment it's got permapine posts that we got for free that we've been using for building around the place heaps of cardboard and heaps of other CRAP that we are going to use in some way shape or form or get rid of but that's our collection point and then we're coming to the other part of the the big circle bed which last time I filmed it was looking very scrappy so to be honest it still looks a bit scrappy but we've had some really good uh, windfalls in there 
the big worm worm farm in there still working. We've had all sorts of flowers growing in there. In fact, I'll take you in and I'll show you some of them. I love my little gate that I've got here, made from an old, an old screen door. And then you can see that that's the area where the chooks are, just in there. This is one of my dad's dahlias in a pot here. Um, we've got grass coming back through where we put the, the cardboard down and the mulch but you know I feel like I can get on top of that. So here's the worm garden bed which has really dropped down a lot considerably because the plants are eating it all up and all the material in there has broken down so that's ready for a refresh but there's still worms in there and those herbs are all just very very active. Um, just so you know what I've got in here, I've got like beautiful chocolate mint, I've got sages, guara or gaura, um, we've got a lovely, um, it's a geranium but it smells really nice, I've got some strawberries in there, I've got a blueberries, yeah so I've got a few things like that going on here. Um, this is a big Jerusalem artichokes which is like a bulb and that's going to come up with a big sunflower type flowers. Not sure if they're going to be any good for picking, but they're certainly going to look lovely in the garden and the birds love them. Um, I've got a lovely, it's like a mix of a red and yellow um, Achillea. This is all on the one plant and it's just so nice. And this is Delphiniums that are going to seed. And I've just keep coming out and cutting them and then I put it in a brown paper bag, but you can actually see all the seeds that are in there. So that's going to give me some beautiful um, flowers for picking. This is um, mustard, which is great for in my salads. Lovely for flower arranging as well. But it's got really strappy and it, scrappy and it's going to seed. But that's okay. I'm not worried about that at the moment. White borage has also gone to seed. Over there you can see some lupins in the background behind the tank there. And that's an old cedar that we actually um had when when we first got here it's an old cedar and it's actually look it's just such a lovely garden feature girls have sat here we've put out carpets and you know done all flowers around this area look it looks very very pretty so we've got some other things growing here so we've got a oregano we've got the bergamo straw flowers um, Bergamo is really pretty actually. There's another straw flower. You know, when you can see them next to my hand, it's quite a good size. And this Bergamo, it starts off, you just get like a couple, and then it builds up to be, well, some, some of them go up to be like four, almost like little houses. Almost like all these little houses. You've got one, two, three, four, four stories high, that one. Um, Alisum, which is a great beneficial plant in the garden. I've got roses planted all the way around this circle bed and um, they go all the way around and they're going to create a beautiful picking border so I'll be able to walk around with my basket like you know one of those old-fashioned ladies that does all her floral work. That's the plan. Um, and then I've got some carnations planted around the edge as well. What have we got here? We've got valerian which is coming up with its flowers looking very pretty. This is corn, uh, no it's not, it's chicory, and that's an actual gum branch that's fallen. But this is chicory and this comes up with lovely blue flowers and this is a coffee alternative. Another straw flower here. And then this is the blue borage, so you can see what the flowers look like. It's blue, but then as they get older, look what they do, they turn pink and the bees love them. So that is a really beneficial plant in the garden. I've got some roses here that my son's going to plant because each one of us has planted some roses around here that are special. Um, this is feverfew. It seems to be lasting a bit longer here in this part of the garden. Probably because it's just a little bit more protected. And then we've got some carnations. So these are proper carnations, you know, really big tall carnations and they smell amazing. And just so you know, um, if your carnations don't smell, it's because they've been grown, they haven't been grown outside. So yeah, they're really, they really are just beautiful, the smell. Um, this is a 
rose that my husband planted called um, Princess of, of Monaco. So I suppose that's for Princess Grace. This is a beautiful weed. That's just grown there all by itself, isn't it clever? And we've got some um, foxglove over there. The shadow of the big gum tree is right above us, which I'll show you. It's amazing. It's a really big, big, big ghost gum. But it also makes a lot of mess and it drops when it gets hot. It just drops all of this bark. So these plants are sort of got to be pretty tough because um, random bits of bark are dropping all over it at this time of the year. Right, what else have I got? This is my Mirabilis, four o'clock. So at four o'clock, which it is around this time of day, they close up and go to sleep and then they pop open again. Um, I have got, oh, here we go, I can show you. Oh, this is, this is comfrey. This is a real beneficial plant, really deep rooted, brings up nitrogen and um, really supports the plants around it. And then when you take off the leaves and put them in your compost, it's a fantastic compost um, leaf, really regenerative for the soil. Now the artichokes are looking a bit scrappy, but we've got lovely flowers there. So they are a real feature in the garden and I don't even know how to cook them, but people that cook artichokes would probably go crazy because I've got about six plants here. I love them for flowers. Um, this is called Irish hollyhocks. So it's like a long, it's a tall plant and it um, has these beautiful little bells. So Irish bells, Irish hollyhocks, I think it's called, Mil I can't really remember the name, but it's it's a very nice plant to grow. And then we're back to the actual worm bed. So that's that part of it. And then when you come, you'll sort of see, we're heading back towards the chooks area. We've got this big open window um, and I've got roses planted on going along they're going to sort of swap over a pink and a yellow one is going to interweave on that part of the fence and then it sort of mirrors over on this side that we've got what is it I think it's Queen Elizabeth oh I just got my fingers yeah that's the Queen Elizabeth one that's Queen Elizabeth there and the other one is gold bunny so two two nice roses that are we're sort of training them to interweave there and we've got Aggies on this side of the other side of the fence, which we're getting rid of because they're just too, they're, they're just becoming too much of a problem. Now I'm down the back near the chooks. And so this is where we've dug out a whole heap of white agapanthus, which I've traded for alpaca poo, which was to me a very good trade. Um, we've got a swan plant here, which was been eaten by a lot of hungry caterpillars that are going to turn into beautiful butterflies in the garden and then they all disappeared so they're all somewhere in chrysalis at the moment and then they'll just pop out and appear in the garden so these aggies they're going and that's going to give me some room all along here that I'm thinking I might plant some dahlias in along here I think that'll look really really nice and then when I step back this way I've got so like the entrance to the chookyard, a big, big fig. The biggest it's been anyway. It's not the biggest fig tree I've ever seen, but it's the biggest it's been, isn't it, Rory? And we didn't get any of the figs because the storm knocked it off and so did the blooming birds. Got another lilac growing here and the princess lilies have died off now, starting to die off. Oh, look, there we go. There's a couple of small ones left. Geranium, um, yeah, quite a shady uh, area. I've got some, some nasturtiums starting to make their way over that little gate there we put as an ornament. Hello girls. Hello girls. I've got a worm farm under this bucket, which is going really well. And the passion fruit here has grown. It's like really, really taken off. So this is just fantastic. I'm so excited. I would absolutely love to have my own passion fruit growing in the garden but it gets very very cold in Charleston in in the winter and I don't know if that's going to do it in I'm just going to help this little passion fruit on its way just so he can find his way up oh, that didn't want to twirl around oh well 
and now we've got sunflowers in the foraging bed for the chooks so they were grown in the chook cage and one of the sunflowers has been knocked down and what are you showing people Rory that's where the worms were the worms were in that room but now I've moved them all around out the back and that's another project and that's just really really messy because I got crook so you can't really see what's going on around there at the moment right this is a closed in area that Rory can't get into because we have got the foxgloves in here and they're poisonous they're poisonous to humans to animals so we keep them him away from those but they look really pretty in flowers the honey bush has completely grown up there and that's giving me a lot of privacy in my, from my neighbors and echium's growing and then all through behind the chooks that's all growing up really nice too we'll go back this way and well i will give you a sneak peek because it's better to show you the befores so i've done a big tidy up in with my worms i've took all my worm farms out that i had separated and I had a worm tower going, I had foam boxes with it, and that's just rubbish. But I ended up, I put them all into this old fridge, I think it was a freezer actually, that we weren't using properly. And I have put about eight worm farms into one big, into, made it into a worm bed. And then I covered it all with all these recycled um, cardboard boxes. We've actually got soldier flies and worms going on in there, which would maybe give people a bit of the creepy crawlies. But, I mean, I think it's very, very exciting. The soldier flies are something that's only new and they are taking over. So they're eating this really, really fast. Whereas the worms would probably break it down a lot slower. They won't eat the worms, they will get along together. Um, the good thing about soldier flies is I can feed them to the chooks. They're very, very high in protein, but I will not feed my worms to the chooks. Um, there's some worms there. The black soldier flies are living alongside the chook, uh, the chooks, living alongside the worms, and they've actually made a significant difference. So what I do is I just feed it in sections as I go along, and this is reduced down. Wow, this was like. This was up about here when I first started doing it and now it's dropped right down so I need to get some more food in there. They'll eat all sorts and I just literally keep a, a stick on each end and I'm closing it over and they've got plenty of airflow. The other thing is that they'll be protected in winter and look it's a whole other conversation. I just I absolutely love my worms um, but the plan for this is that it's going to be made into a seat and this is going to be mosaic or painted at least and terry has started doing some stonework which she's going to close up this section on this side so it looks a lot nicer and when we sit here on it we're going to be able to sit here and there's another makeshift fence that we bought from some other and uh, it was actually the lid of a chookyard uh, shed that we got given and we're going to make this into a fernery so this is a real watch this space sort of area and all of this cruddy mess, clobber as Terry calls it, is going to be gone. And my plan is to have a massive vertical garden of ferns and then like water and fernery area here. And really relaxing, peaceful because we're under a different type of gum under here. And this is the gum that the koalas love. They like going in the big, big one over there, but they really love this variety. I don't know what it is, but I, I can just imagine sitting in here and feeling really peaceful with my little doggy and um yeah enjoying enjoying some beautiful you know fern scenery and very lush green scenery um what else can i show you i can go around this way then we've pretty much done an update of the garden i haven't come out the front i meant to have put that hose away but i haven't um raspberries here they've i've cut them back all the foraging side of things on the side that the chickens can eat letting them go to seed but yeah it all needs a good tidy and mirabilis are out here as well the elderberry looks a bit scrappy some sage you're getting my shadow in the photo there there's more jerusalem artichokes which aren't from jerusalem and they're not an artichoke so i don't know why they called it 
big fennel and then I've got this area here near between the chooks so I've got some sunflowers growing in there and there's tree dahlias planted in the back area so they'll come up and look really pretty they won't be for oh Christina you are a drama queen that's Christina Aguilera and Etta James and uh, this area around here there's another elderflower which is doing really well beautiful flowers and um, we've got the lion's mane lion's tail not sure exactly which but it's a it's lion something that plant looks terrific another hollyhock Herbie the horse is like hiding in there and my chamomile which I cut back is starting to grow again and what is this this is a comfrey that I've got going in there so we've had extremes of heat or um, cold which has just been really weird for summer the apricot tree hasn't given me any fruit and the honey bush which is around here loosen trees growing this is going really well this is going to be fantastic mulch for the garden and chook feed as well but the honey bush has now come to full you know into seed mode and I've hacked it right back and then once that's um, once it starts to go a little bit floppy I'm just going to chop that right back and then that'll thicken up again next summer but it gives something else a chance to grow in that area um, same as the elderflowers have given me like the roots have popped one up here so this will get potted up and that'll get sold and that is the plan so I collected a lot of seeds from the mirabilis that's something I'll be able to sell as well and the aggies well gosh I'll give them away I think I'll pay someone to take them away that's how much they're annoying me these aggies here where we're going to do a new garden bed we're going to literally take all of these out and um, even if we maybe kept like a thin line and took we could take at least two meters meter and a half out of this and give ourselves ec extra growing space in there because as much as I don't want to argue with Gary about the width I'm allowed to plant I have to listen to what he's saying because we do need space in the driveway to to move around for vehicles and everything and he doesn't really want me to block the shed so all these permapine posts we got for free um, oh and this this bed head here it's a top and bottom of a bed that is going to become a gate over here I'll show you where we're going to put it and then I think we'll sign off so it's going to sit right here right here we're going to get it attached so that you're entering the secret garden from that gate and people can't enter from this way or the other side of it there's an entrance over that way into the um, we'll, we'll walk there. there's an entrance there and there's an entrance to where the pond area is but other than that I don't really want people to be entering the garden except through I want to have a gate at every point of entry just not because we have to have a gate but just the fun of like coming here where the where this is having an arbor and a gate and in we go and then we're walking through a lovely little path which bulbs are all going to be growing up and it'll look so pretty and then we've got another little gate here that we come out of and we enter down into the shade garden and then we can sit down and have a cup of tea or a glass of wine under the lovely golden elm so that's it that's it from me for today that's a good update isn't it Rory what do you reckon hey you're ready for a drink Dad might be coming home soon too, mightn't he? Yeah. Hey, Rory. 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 Oh, no. He's not in the zone. He's watching something. Do you want to jump up here? Ah, oh, that's a good boy. Sit down. Sit down. Hey, sit down. Well, you know what? That's enough. Say see you, everyone. Okay. Take care, everyone. Have a good night and um, happy gardening to you. See ya.